The information provided on the Forever Young Show by its host or sponsors is for educational and personal alternatives. Statements have not been established by the Food and Drug Administration. They are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Welcome to the Forever Young Radio Show. Over the past two decades, we have had the opportunity to serve and help so many listeners. We do that by bringing on respected educators in all fields of health and wellness. We pride ourselves on keeping consumers in the know about our ever-changing health care system and ways to support the body. Each week, with the help of our special guests and experts, we have one goal in mind, and that's to ensure every listener has the most up-to-date information on ways to support all aspects of health. Now, here's your host. Hello, everyone. So glad you could join us today right here on Forever Young. If it's the first time that you've caught our show, whether it be on the traditional radio dial, Sirius XM, or any of our great podcast platforms, welcome to the program. We've been here for, I don't know, well over two decades, and we show up each and every week with a mission of informing and educating our audience all about healthier lifestyle options and really based on good quality science. Now, we have a wonderful guest joining me today. He's been a co-host of this program for many, many years, America's natural doctor, Dr. Mark Stangler. Hey, Dr. Mark. Kelly, how are you doing? I'm doing great. You know, it's always such a wonderful opportunity when we can carve out the time to get together. And, you know, nobody's uh, seeing what's going on in the health world more than you seeing patients for goodness going on 27 years, right? Yeah, well, it's always great to be with you. And thank you for providing the information to everybody. Oh, well, I have to pat you on the bat. I just take the information you provide and I recycle it. <laughs> yeah, but you're the ve- you're the vehicle. Without the vehicle, it's no good. <laughs> well, I appreciate that compliment, Dr. Mark. And again, it's always great to have you uh, on the program and to be a part of the show. And again, if listeners are just catching us, they want to learn more about us, they can go to two great websites. The first one is foreveryoungradio.com. That is our show website. We have over 415 podcast episodes, uh, articles from A to Z. Uh, Most of them are written by yours truly, Dr. Mark Stangler, again, America's Natural Doctor. Or we have our wonderful americasnaturaldoctor.com. Boy, you could get lost there reading those articles from A to Z from every health topic and topics that people are dealing with right now, not antiquated issues uh, pre-pandemic and things like that. So do yourself a favor, check out either website and get yourself some information to share with your loved ones. Now on this show, why I tapped Dr. Mark in is we're hearing a lot about candida. We're hearing a lot about fungal issues and things that are coming up in people's health and causing a real issue Uh, with other problems like digestion, maybe their skin, maybe they're not sleeping well. So again, wanted to get with you today, Dr. Stangler, and really just explain to people because we've heard about candida for years, I think, since the day we got into this health game all those years ago. But for many people, they've not heard about candida. Would you mind just to set the stage a little bit on our conversation today? What really is candida? Well, candida is a type of fungus. Most people are familiar with the term fungus maybe they've seen it you know in the corners of their home or something at some point but and and more specifically it's a type of yeast so kind of the general category is fungus and then more specifically it's a type of yeast and people are surprised to find out that part of our microbiome we have what's called the mycobiome m-y-c-o biome and we actually have naturally occurring yeast in our microbiome which includes our digestive tract even areas like our skin But the problem we run into is uh, the candida yeast, it's opportunistic. So it's there in a certain amount. It's kept in check by our immune system, by the other gut bacteria. But when it's given the right environment for it and the improper environment in our body, it can start to flourish. It becomes uh, disease-oriented or pathogenic in the digestive tract. It can also include the vaginal and urinary tract. And so this can cause a whole host of problems not just within those areas we discussed, but many, many organs and systems of the body. Yeah, and you see patients, Dr. Mark, and so does your wonderful wife, Dr. Angela Stangler at the Stangler Center of Integrative Medicine. How many people do you have coming in there that maybe have candida and didn't even know they had it? Hmm, It's a good question. Let's just say we see it fairly commonly. How do we know that? Well, we know by talking to the patients, the number one symptom that kind of warns us there might be a problem with candida and that's just people who are constantly prone to uh, digestive gas and bloating because Mm. yeast in the gut it ferments carbohydrates any type of carbohydrate even healthy types of carbs 
And so you create a lot of a gaseous products. So that's kind of one tip off, but there's many, many other symptoms. Then in addition, we see it coming up on stool tests. You know, it's, it's at a high level in the stool test, as well as we measure blood antibody levels. And so, yes, we do see this is a phenomenon which is real. It's, it's happening medically. A lot of doctors aren't well trained in it. They think just very sick people get candida problems, but that's just not the case. So you've always been in the know and understood this opportunistic yeast that kind of just gets in and grows out of that small intestine and creates all this these different issues for people. I think previously, you know, 20 years ago, they'd say, hey, do you have a white coated tongue? Do you have yellowing toenails? But I think where we are now in a, how many people are having digestive issues, I think there's a lot more to rule out than just candida and a wonderful opportunity for people to read a little bit more about the gut or even its skin connection or maybe why uh, you're having problems uh, with gas and bloating. Head on over to americasnaturaldoctor.com. There's some wonderful new articles that Dr. Mark has put there. There's an eczema and gut connection. Uh, I see that quite a bit where those two go hand in hand. And we're going to ask Dr. Mark about that. And then there's another great one. Is this the cause of your gas and bloating? So spend a little bit of time there. Again, that is americasnaturaldoctor.com. Dr. Mark, again, thank you for being here to talk about candida. This is something that mainstream is even talking a little bit more about it. And uh, consumers are being told they could potentially have candida albicans and they really are lost and don't know what to do with it. So let's start really where the problem begins. How does this happen? How does, if we all have candida in our system, why would mine stay under control and maybe somebody else's grow rampantly out of the system it's supposed to stay in? Now, interestingly, my research, I found this has been discussed in the mainstream medical literature. So for example, the journal Current Opinions in Microbiology, they report that the Western diet and the use of antibiotics are the primary reasons why the Western population has candida albicans, mm -hmm. much more so than non-Western societies or countries. And then also we found in the journal Gut Pathogens, again, these are very mainstream, they state that excessive refined sugar promotes the overgrowth of fungus like candida albicans and as well can cause leaky gut. So we see in the mainstream literature, they, they basically address and recognize the fact that the Western diet, which is high in simple sugars, low in good bacteria, low in prebiotics, low in fiber, all the things that set people up for candida, they, they acknowledge that, that that you know, is a primary issue. And then of course, antibiotics, destroying the good bacteria, then allowing the opportunistic bugs like the candida to flourish, to overgrow and then cause problems. Now there's some other things people should be aware of about, and that is the effects of stress. You know, when you're under stress, studies now show that it changes your microbiome, your gut unfavorably, which again mm -hmm. would allow the candida to overgrow. Um, medications, a very common one is birth control pills. Birth control pills are known to cause candida overgrowth. Uh, the other one is mercury toxicity. Maybe you've got a lot of amalgam fillings in your mouth, maybe a lot of tuna, swordfish, things like this loaded with mercury. Those can be the cause too. And then when people have other health conditions, uh, especially like long hauler syndrome, post COVID syndrome, we're now seeing where it causes not just changes in your immune system, but there's a lot of research now showing again, uh, detrimental effects to the microbiome, allowing the candida to flourish again. So those are some of the things people should be aware of. Yeah, those are some big things to be aware of. I mean, we're seeing so many people go on antibiotics and I don't think um, they really understand if you go on a single dose, which goodness, there's times where you may need to go on that. We're not saying you should never, but uh, I don't think they realize that it wipes out everything good, bad and different. And it could take months to re-inoculate that gut, right? To get the healthy fighters back to organize the uh, immune system response, which I believe it's what, 70% of uh, our immune system resides within that microbiome and gut, Dr. Mark? Exactly. So you have a couple of problems there. Number one, if you got a candida problem, then you're wasting a lot of immune power on that candida in the gut, and you're not going to fight the bugs, you know, we're exposed to the environment wow. as properly. Number two, Again, the candida we, we know is a cause of leaky gut. So now you're going to get absorption problems. You'll get low in nutrients. Um, you get more inflammation in the gut and the body as a result of that. So they, they actually, in the mainstream medical literature, they have shown that they have done studies where just one round of antibiotics um, can 
increase greatly the candida in some people as well as cause leaky gut. So it just depends on the person. What's their state of health before they take the antibiotics? How strong is the antibiotics? How long are they on a, on the antibiotics? I mean, there, you know, there's different factors that are involved. Understood. And again, we talked a couple of symptoms. We talked gas, bloating, maybe the yelling of the, the toenails, the white coated tongue. Is there other things like can people feel like they have chronic fatigue syndrome? Can it make you feel tired? What else can you share with us, Dr. Mark? Oh, yes. Uh, and there's quite a list, you know, that potentially could be related to candida. Well, a couple that people should know right up front is the mainstream literature tells us that a high percent of people that, that have irritable bowel syndrome, the most common digestive condition in America, yeah, they have candida. And it makes sense because think about it. A lot of people with irritable bowel syndrome, what do they have? They have gas and bloating. They can be prone to loose stool, sometimes constipation, uh, belching abdominal cramping and pain. So about 80% of people, some research shows, shows that people with irritable bowel syndrome have candida. Beyond the digestive tract, yeah, there's many things. For example, like you said, fatigue could be a symptom. People that have unexplained skin rashes or aggravation of their eczema, that could come from candida too. We know that people, sometimes they have arthritis or muscle pain. It could be because of the inflammatory effects of the candida. A common one we hear a lot of patients tell us would be the term they use brain fog, you know, mm. poor memory and con concentration. That could be candida related. Also mood issues uh, with candida because it does affect your detoxification. It affects your neurotransmitters produced in your gut. And yes, produced in your gut. We produce more neurotransmitters in our gut than our brain. That could be aggravating for things like depression and anxiety. And then also people who have a lot of food sensitivities. It could be because the candida is revving up their immune system in their gut and their small intestine, causing leaky gut. And then you're getting a lot of food sensitivities. And then the last one, Kelly, I want to mention would be people with chronic sinusitis. Mayo Clinic's published at least two studies now where they basically test people with chronic sinusitis. You know, they do cultures of their sinus. They swab and they do cultures. And they have found about almost 90% of people that have chronic sinusitis, they have a, a yeast, a candida infection chronically in their sinus. And so, you know, people think, oh, allergies, allergies. Well, that could be a problem, but, you know, candida seems to be a big problem too. And one of the reasons why people with chronic sinusitis may have chronic candida problems is when you look at the insert for the commonly used steroidal nasal sprays, you're going to see right in there, it mentions uh, candidal fungal overgrowth in the sinus as a side effect. Another thing, and I don't know if this is a myth or if just something that we've all repeated over the years, but let me ask you this, Dr. Mark, like I've heard that candida could potentially also block absorption of certain nutrients. Is that true? Does it through the mechanism of basically causing irritation, inflammation of the small intestine okay. uh, where the leaky gut occurs. So it does but kind of indirectly. So by basically damaging your small intestine, then causing the leaky gut, then yes, you get malabsorption. So that would be the mechanism. Okay. And again, leaky gut, you've done so much on that, Dr. Mark. You have a 90 plus page handout with some really good uh, prebiotic recipes, probiotic recipes, explaining what leaky gut is. I think for our listeners, it's like $19. Um, and let me tell you, it costs a lot more to put together than that, but uh, it's so <laughs> worth it. You know what? It's so worth it at the end of the day for people who don't know what's going on, especially with leaky gut. I mean, you do not want to have that go undetected um, and not do anything about it. It can cause massive issues. And uh, on americasnaturaldoctor.com, front page, you can uh, figure out how to get your download. And again, it's $19. It's delivered directly to your inbox. And it's a wonderful uh, PDF with kind of explaining everything. So check that out. But again, you know, I think about shows that we've done with Doug Kaufman, Dr. Mark, and mm -hmm. uh, we've talked about the fungal connection. Now, as we're talking about a yeast, which is candida, are other common fungal issues happening in addition to that or potentially could they be? Can you share a little bit about that? Yes, well, Candida albicans is one type of yeast, and there are other types of species, you know, people can be prone to. And actually, it has been shown in the, in the medical literature that some of these other Candida species and other fungal organisms are becoming more problematic. Uh, and people are, doctors are seeing them, actually, even in the emergency room in the hospital. So it is a concern. If you think about medicine, you know, all the focus has been on historically bacterial infections. And then we've, you know, with the COVID, we've had antivirals, but, you know, there has not been a lot of development in the pharmaceutical industry in terms of antifungals. And so it's, it's a concern actually, 
in, in, in medicine today. So they're concerned about it. Fortunately, you know, from the holistic integrative perspective, we have many tools to help uh, prevent and treat fungal issues. And again, if you guys don't follow him, Know the Cause, a great TV show, and now they have a new podcast. So go and check that out. It's very helpful. The more you can get good science-based information versus, you know, going to Google and just hoping for the best, the better off you are. So make sure that you follow these different organizations that can help you. Because if you're going in and you have a fungal issue, how is it treated with traditional medicine, Dr. Mark? Is it sometimes you're given a medication and then that medication could make the situation even worse at times? Well, first of all, conventional medicine, which I'm trained in, I mean, generally, they're not going to recognize the problem to begin with. Okay. I mean, in conventional medicine, I mean, essentially, unless you, you know, break out with like ringworm or a kind of a yeasty type rash on your skin, or you got a major illness and you're in a hospital and you get a secondary candida infection going through your bloodstream. I mean, other than that, and also vaginal yeast problems, vaginitis related to yeast, um, they don't really address it, to be honest. Okay. Um, so, I mean, let's just say you've got gas, bloating, irritable bowel syndrome. They're not going to give you an antifungal medication um, to help with the yeast problem in your gut. Yeah, I figured. So, again, you can go to our website. That's foreveryoungradio.com. You can read a great article written by Dr. Mark Stangler all about candida. Or go and check out that leaky gut uh, PDF download booklet. You can get that on the homepage of americasnaturaldoctor.com. Be right back after the break. Did you know that the liver is one of our body's most vital organs? In fact, the liver performs over 500 functions within the body. It makes blood proteins, clotting proteins, lipoproteins, and 80% of our cholesterol. It filters blood, makes bile, makes and breaks down hormones, regulates blood sugar, and changes harmful toxins into substances that can be safely eliminated from the body. Keeping the liver functioning at optimal levels should be on the top of our health priority checklist. A great way to add some additional support is by incorporating doctor-formulated liver wellness. Liver wellness contains therapeutic amounts of branded synergistic nutrients that have been shown to help support all major pathways of liver detoxification. Liver wellness is purity tested in a CGMP certified facility and is 100% additive and gluten-free. To learn more about liver wellness, please visit americasnaturaldoctor.com and click on the shop button. That's americasnaturaldoctor.com. Welcome back again, having a wonderful discussion with good friend of the show, Dr. Mark Stangler, uh, again, founder of the Stangler Center for Integrative Medicine in Encinitas, California. If you have interest, you can learn more about his clinic at markstangler.com. Uh, again, he accepts telemedicine patients from across the country, as well as his wonderful wife, Dr. Angela Stangler, who also comes on the program quite a bit. You can learn more about some of her topics underneath our podcast episodes. All right, Dr. Mark, now... I want to ask you some questions, but I also have some family members over the years that are sugar kings and queens. I'm not a big sugar person, but I'll tell you, I've seen them have candida issues because of that. Now, if somebody is pounding sugar, eating tons of carbohydrates, and they have candida, do you feel like that yeast craves it even more because it's kind of what it's built on? Share a little bit more on that, Dr. Mark. Well, you're very accurate on that. There is this phenomenon who, for people who have candida they definitely crave uh, sugar, simple carbohydrates, and I would say alcohol. Okay. Um, so it usually worsens the cravings. And that's some of the tip-off, you know, symptoms that you might have a candida problem. You just really have trouble getting that, that sugar craving under control. And so the problem is, even if you're doing like an antifungal protocol, let's say you're taking some anti-candida supplements, which could be helpful. But then you're continuing to feed the candida with these simple sugars, you know, being a yeast, obviously it thrives on sugar uh, and, and alcohol. You're, you know, trying to get rid of that one on one level, another level you're feeding it. So you may yeah. not, you may not yeah. get too far. So you got to do both really to get, to get the really good results. Yeah. And some of the protocols that I've read has even said, Hey, try to not have dairy uh, as well, because I think a lot of people, will, you know, we eat Greek yogurt, we do low sugar, uh, try to go to a more fermented source, but a lot of people aren't, out there aren't doing that. They may just go to a grocery store and think, oh, well, okay, I have a yeast. This is probably good for my microbiome. And they're buying a yogurt that's 30 grams in sugar, 25 in carbohydrates, like probably not the best way to go, right? 
Yeah, exactly. I mean, if you look at cow's milk, I mean, it's high in sugar, regular cow's yeah. milk. So from that aspect, but no, we like the yogurt, you know, it could be the dairy yogurt, it could be, you know, the coconut yogurt, macadamia nut yogurt, get that good bacteria in there. Absolutely. So those are good things to do. But yeah, you have to really get that simple sugar intake at 25 grams or less a day. I mean, if people start analyzing their diet, you know, from the drinks they have to some of their meals, I mean, it's they're way beyond that. So the diet is really key. You're, you're not going to do well if you don't address the diet. And what we find a lot of people that are addicted to sugar, simple sugars, you know, they, they get a sugar withdrawal the first, you know, three to five days. They get a sugar withdrawal. But what they find is after about the fifth day, their overall craving for sugar drops dramatically, unlike it ha has been in a long time. So they get over that hump the first three to five days, then they actually do very, very well long term with the sugar cravings. Yeah, and I bet uh, we get a lot of questions. I'm sure you at your office with your patients get a lot of questions when you put them on this protocol because people are like, oh my gosh, I have a headache. I'm not feeling good. I have a skin rash for the first time. But that's really just showing that it's working its way out, right? It's like that detoxification process that you're talking about, Dr. Mark. I mean, it, yes, that definitely can happen. Now, what we've done in recent years for these people to make it easier for them, we'll put them on supplements like glutathione, milk thistle for liver support detoxification, liver and kidney detoxification. And normally we can greatly reduce those side effects. So there are ways to minimize that. That's great. And then I just want to talk a little bit more because I have taken the value that you offer at the Stangler Center for Integrative Medicine with the um, food sensitivity test. If you remember, I've done mine. It really helped me so much because I was consuming whey protein and wondering why every time I'd work out, why my stomach would hurt so bad. And again, I, you know, I, I should know, I should put two and two together, but it never had been that way before. So obviously something had changed. And then I was able to see that I was also allergic to oysters. So uh, again, those food sensitivity tests that you offer at your clinic are so telling because you can even test for in intestinal permeability like leaky gut. So can you test for candida, Dr. Mark? Is that something that people can do? Yeah, there are blood tests will measure the antibodies long term and short term to candida. And for people who are suspecting it's an issue, I mean, more often than not, the levels come up quite high, confirming mm -hmm. the immune system is continuing to react, you know, to the candida. Yeah, very interesting. And I think over the years, a lot that I've seen go hand in hand is people who have gluten intolerance will generally have a candida issue only because they continue to eat gluten uh, when they shouldn't. Or even my grandfather, who's in his 90s, he has celiacs. Mm. Uh, when he was first diagnosed, again, he went to a really great naturopathic medical doctor. This was 15 years ago, and he was told he had candida. And he was that guy who loved sugar. He would only eat sugar, you know, Italian food, and that was it. So again, do you see that when somebody has a gluten sensitivity, maybe they're more prone to things like candida? Absolutely. And I think there's a few reasons, but one would just go down to the point where, you know, if they're eating the gluten and they shouldn't be, then it's been very well demonstrated in studies. It, it just directly causes leaky gut. And then so you're, you start getting imbalance in the gut, the leaky gut, uh, immune dysfunction, and then the candida again can thrive more easily as well. I get it. Okay. So we've talked about the fatigue. We've talked about the brain fog. I want to talk a little bit more about that brain fog because I think that people don't put hand in hand if you have digestive issues or if you're dealing with a number of the things that we've spoken about today, they don't think it could affect their, their brain and their mood. How does that, I know that you had spoken about it in the last segment, but can we get a little bit more in depth and educate on that and talk about the connection? Absolutely. Well, it has been demonstrated, again, in the medical literature, we now know for a fact what's called the, the gut-brain connection. And so when you have problems going on in the gut, let's say things like candida infection, uh, creating an inflammatory response by the immune system, we have to remember that inflammatory response isn't just going to be in the gut. It's going to extend through the bloodstream and thus throughout the body. Oh. And of course, our brain, you know, has blood flow to it. So these inflammatory compounds, and I won't get into all the fancy names, but that can create inflammation systemically in the body, including the brain. Uh, number two, remember, if you have candida problems in the gut, you're probably going to have leaky gut, which means you're going to not absorb your nutrients properly. And our brain needs all sorts of nutrients. It needs B vitamins. It needs magnesium. It needs omega fatty acids. And so that can contribute to 
uh, brain dysfunction as well, or brain fog, as they call it. Yeah, well, let me tell you, I think we've all been there a time or two, and it is not a fun place to be. I don't enjoy getting brain fog. I've had it before with my autoimmune Hashimoto's or different things I uh, had going on, uh, even with getting COVID over the last couple of years one time. I feel like I had some brain fog after that. And again, you just don't feel yourself. And so at the end of the day, you need to figure out how to mitigate that uh, and really support the brain. And I find it fascinating, uh, the vagus nerve that's connected to the microbiome and all the research being done on that. Uh, again, just solidifying another uh, great example. Now, pre-pandemic, Dr. Mark, do you think that the immune system, when it had less to kind of contend with, uh, could help with the prevention of fungal infections previously? Or do you think now it's working way over time and the immunity is no longer enough to kind of prevent that? Well, I think honestly what's happened for a lot of people is they actually had some degree of candida previous to the pandemic, yeah. you know, because of their diet and not eating cultured foods and things like that. So I think a lot of people had it. Now, maybe they had it, you know, to a mild degree where it caused just some minor symptoms, you know, a little gas and bloating and, you know, maybe some skin issues, but nothing major. And then they um, had an issue, you know, with COVID uh, in one way or the other, and now their immune system is compromised uh, long term. And so now the candida starts to flourish. And what they have shown, it's not just candida. I mean, people with viral infections in the past, Epstein-Barr or people had Lyme disease. But again, like people with candida too, basically it's coming up, it's becoming more dominant, flourishing because of, you know, the immune damage. And so now these people had a mild issue. Now maybe they have more of a moderate to severe issue. Yeah. Yay. Just kidding. Um, and I, th I think that that's where people are just like, what's next? I mean, you know, you got people developing more autoimmune. I know you've seen that. And again, I think people, the more you can read based on research, and these are really short articles. A lot of times we're even giving you a YouTube video. Uh, Dr. Mark gets in there and just kind of shares with you some different things on what to look at. But on americasnaturaldoctor.com, I highly recommend you go and read the gut brain connection. Uh, because if you have had things like this brain fog and you're just like, gosh, my brain hurts, I'm not feeling myself, make sure that there's little things and modifications that you could change. And one of the greatest gifts I've learned from you, Dr. Mark, all these years is to incorporate the Mediterranean diet uh, into my life. I have felt so much better over the years incorporating that. If you start researching the Mediterranean diet, I mean, People always historically thought about it for its benefits in preventing cardiovascular disease, which is very, very true. But it goes so far beyond that, you know, gut health, uh, cancer prevention, brain function, you know, dementia reduction in risk. It just goes on and on. It's unbelievable the amount of studies. And so I promote like a modified version of it where we do cut back on the grains because most American grains aren't too too healthy as well as dairy products in US for a lot of them. You know, it's a great diet to fall long term. So you're not providing an environment for the candida, but also supporting the immune system. It's anti-inflammatory. There's foods in there which act as prebiotics, which feed the good flora in your microbiome. So it's just a great choice for, for a lot of people. Stick with us. We'll be right back after the break. Millions of Americans are frustrated with their urinary problems, more specifically the need to urinate multiple times a day and night. Leaking urine is frustrating to many people over the age of 45. An overactive bladder, OAB, refers to a group of symptoms that cause a sudden need to urinate or the urge to urinate. OAB affects up to 40% of women and 30% of men in the United States. The most common symptom is a sudden, uncontrolled need or urge to urinate. Bladder Wellness Formula contains three herbs in the exact same concentration and amount as used in positive published studies. The formula also contains pumpkin seed extract and cranberry extract, which also have been shown to help support bladder function and help normalize urinary symptoms. Try bladder wellness today and experience higher confidence and freedom. Learn more at americasnaturaldoctor.com and click shop. That's americasnaturaldoctor.com. Welcome back, listeners. Again, hope you're learning so much about this opportunistic yeast, candida albicans that we're highlighting today. 
And if you'd like to learn more about Dr. Mark and Angela Stangler, you can do so by visiting the website, markstangler.com. We'll have a direct link underneath this episode, or you can learn more about his great store at drstangler.com. All of this can be uh, sent from the Made Hub, americasnaturaldoctor.com. Dr. Mark, always great talking about these different topics. We're not hearing a lot about candida out there in mainstream news or even a lot of these different health shows. Again, with us being on over 25 years and you seeing patients for close to 30, I think you kind of have your finger uh, on the pulse of what you're hearing, who's, you know, what are the chief complaints, especially for patients you've seen many, many years, and maybe they're developing different stuff. And so you have somebody come in, you do your health detective uh, work, which I know you do. Uh, you always ask a lot of questions. You want to get down to the root cause to try to figure out, you know, why this person is dealing what they're dealing with. But once you figure out that they have a candida overgrowth, what are the steps you guys kind of take at the clinic? Well, thank you. Yes. I mean, once we know it's it's the problem, either based on their symptoms or symptoms and signs in lab testing, you know, we get right to work with the patient. We emphasize what they need to do for the diet. Now, the, the, the Mediterranean diet or modified version, of course, is excellent, but there can be other diets people could use. Maybe they've used in the past and they're very compatible with them. It could be the paleo diet, some people a ketogenic diet. All these types of diets are going to be real strict the simple sugars, the simple carbohydrates. There's also another great diet out there. I you call it the Kaufman diet, which is low sugar, healthy diet. People can follow as well. So number one, we emphasize they've got to follow the diet for a period of time very strictly. So we're not feeding the candida. Number two, along with that, that includes avoiding alcohol very, very strictly. Obviously mm -hmm. that's a big problem. Number three, we get them to consume prebiotic. These are foods which feed the good bacteria uh, and the good yeast which crowd out the harmful yeast like the candida as well as probiotic foods which give direct amounts of the good flora which again crowd out the bad yeast so that's you know step number one step number two we want to use some antifungal agents because uh, people if you just do diet it's going to help it's going to work it's going to work well but for some people more like moderate to severe problems it you know could take a long time and so we want to use, for example, like antifungal supplements. And there's some tremendous herbs which are very powerful as antifungal agents. The classic is oregano oil, you know, powder, capsule, liquid, tablet form, very, very powerful. Uh, we always use that to some degree. Number two, berberine. People may have heard of berberine used for diabetes, but berberine has been shown in published studies to have an anti-candida effect. So that's good as well. Also, we can use other standbys such as caprylic acid is used too. Another herb called Pa Darko is great. And so we usually with patients use formulas like anti-candida formulas, which have a combination, uh, different mechanisms, how they get rid of candida and yeast in the gut and in the body. So we'll, we will most often do that. However, there are some patients that are really severe and we might give them antifungal pharmaceuticals followed by the supplements. So things like nystatin, which gets rid of yeast in the gut, or fluconazole, known as diflucan, which gets rid of the yeast in the body systemically. We might do some short courses of that followed by the herbal supplements. Yeah. As well, probiotics, you know, taking high doses of human studied probiotics, which directly are going to help to, you know, crowd out that yeast. Uh, you know, that's a, a great idea, too. That's great. You know, a lot of the times I've recommended, you have a wonderful formula you use in your clinic. It's called Candida Wellness. Now there's 10 ingredients in there and your serving size is one capsule and you get 180 in a container. But my question for you, and not that we're dosing in any way on this show, again, if you have questions, uh, talk to your medical doctor, but do you do a loading dose with this? Because that's one of the main questions I get. Kelly, do I really just take one a day or? For our patients who are in generally good health, you know, not worried about major detox reactions. Actually, we have most people take two capsules twice a day before meals. Okay. And we'll do that for like two to three months. Then at that point, they may not need it or they'll cut down to two a day for a period of time. But that's like the standard dose. Now, if someone's extremely sensitive just in general when they take things, you know, we might start at one capsule twice a day before okay. meals. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. Now, one of the things that have has always kind of shocked me about this formula is biotin. Like when I think of biotin, I'm like hair, skin, nails, but... Am I, am I wrong here? What, why would you put that in the candida wellness, Dr. Mark? Yeah, it is interesting because you're right. That's what most people use it for. Most people use biotin for hair, skin, and nails. There's also some research showing it brings down blood sugar levels. People with oh. 
type 2 diabetes. But biotin actually has uh, published studies on it where it has it in of itself a direct antifungal effect that makes it harder for candida to, to replicate, to reproduce, so to speak. So it does have a direct effect right on the candida itself. Wow, that's pretty cool. And, you know, yeah. I've used different things and recommended um, things like gymnema as well, which kind of if you're having a sugar issue and you take gymnema, based on research, can change the way you you taste sugar. It tastes different. What do you know about gymnema, Dr. Mark? Yeah, gymnema, we've used it, boy, I think, I think I was using it 25 years ago for people with type 2 diabetes. Oh, wow. But you bring up, yeah, it is unique because there is some human published research showing it actually helps to regenerate some of the cells in the pancreas that produce insulin and it brings you know glucose levels down too but you bring up one very important point that we should address remember we know that 50 percent of the american adult population has pre-diabetes or type 2 diabetes and so when you have diabetes these people are really prone to having candida problems i mean this is well recognized in medicine these people you know people with diabetes is not well controlled i mean they get yeast on their skin and their ears their toenails their fingernails it shows you how sugar feeds candida and so if you're kind of a if you're the type of person let's say maybe you don't have diabetes but you have pre-diabetes you want to take care of that candida we've got to get your blood sugar down you know long term or else you're always going to be predisposed to having problems can't remember. I know you have over 75 products at drstangler.com. Again, that's D-R-S-T-E-N-G-L-E-R, drstangler.com. Do you have anything that contains gymnema? Do you have that in your um, blood sugar health or what, what do you have, Dr. Mark? We do have a product called Gluco Wellness and that does have the gymnema in it. You're right. Okay. Because I want to be able to recommend a few things for our listeners to go and look at. Again, Candida Wellness, fantastic. Uh, digestive Wellness, uh, another great formula you put out there, Dr. Mark. Um, and then this Gluco Well, we'll go ahead and put that out. But again, getting people on a protocol to be able to support the body and the detoxification process in a more gentler form. Well, you right. You raise a good point. I mean, I think modern integrative doctors like myself, you know, we realized it a while back. Some of this information in the past, even within our own professions, I think is outdated. People do not have to go through healing crises, detoxification, you know, stressful events. If we support detoxification during these types of like anti-candida protocols, I don't see any problems with patients. I haven't seen for years. Now, again, if you're doing things like using uh, herbs and nutrients which support liver and kidney detoxification, so your detox pathways can clear the metabolites of uh, candida. Now you gotta remember the metabolites of candida, things like scatol and other kind of alcohol derivatives, our detox pathways can clear them, but they'll clear them if the detox pathways are working properly. And a lot of people because of toxin exposure in their diet, they're not working like they should. So if we support those pathways, you don't have to go through a detox reaction. Or if so, it's be very mild. So we don't see that problem with patients and have for years. Again, we're using the herbs for the liver, liver formulas, milk thistle, you know, yeah. chicory, dandelion, things like that. Certain types of glutathione. I know you've talked about Cetria glutathione, companies like Emerald Labs carry. Um, these things support the liver and kidneys. So these toxic byproducts of candida aren't uh, causing a flare up. There's lots of different things we can do to support the body. A really cool thing that we do with Dr. Mark is these are clinical supplements. These are produced to be able to use with his patients. And again, it's great, Dr. Mark. Thank you for letting it uh, be out there in the world. So people who are just trying to deal with their health have access to these wonderful supplements in most cases that you formulated. But you get 15% off each and every day. All you have to do is use the code FOREVER. That's F O R. E-V-E-R, and you get 15% off. But, you know, when you're utilizing these things, make sure that if you have questions, you go and read some of these articles or reach out to the clinic itself to make an appointment. You can do that by calling 855-D-O-C-M-A-R-K. And again, just kind of stay in the know about what's going on uh, within this health journey that we're all on and do our best to get through it. We'll put all this great stuff underneath the weekly highlight page because we know some of you are working out. Some of you are driving on the traditional dial. Uh, so no, we'll leave that up there for a few weeks. Just go and find this great uh, episode on Candida featuring Dr. Mark Stangler. Dr. Mark, appreciate you beyond words. Uh, you help us so much on this show and help our listeners. Please keep up the good work and, you know, my best to you. Oh, hey, thanks a lot, Kelly.
You got it. All right, listeners, that does it for our show today. Have a happy and healthy week, and we'll catch you next time right here on Forever Young. If you get lost along the way, foreveryoungradio.com. 